Hello and welcome to KU Patshala. I am Deepa Nair and I am Assistant Professor of English at Sri Ayyappa College, Shungangade, Nagarkoil. My video is on Anglo-Norman literature. So, let us delve into Anglo-Norman literature. Anglo-Norman literature. Norman is the short form of Northman. The Northmen were from Scandinavia. They were groups of tall, blonde, fearless men who roamed around in their ships looking for adventure. They were known as the children of Woden and they moved under the raven flag of the Danes. They had destroyed the Northumbrian civilization in the 9th century. Later on, most of coastal France was conquered by these Normans who came from Scandinavia. After their conquest of the coastal regions of France, these places came to be known as Normandy. The Normans were involved in intermarriages with the Franks of France. The Franks used to follow Roman traditions before the arrival of the Normans. And the Normans used to follow Viking traditions. So, because of the intermarriages between the Normans and the Franks, there was a blending of Norman and Frank blood, culture, civilization. And what emerged was a very sophisticated French culture. The race of the Norse and French people then conquered Anglo-Saxon England. And after coming to England, they introduced a Romance language, that is French, which was actually based on ordinary Latin, the Latin that was spoken in the army camps and villages, not the Latin of classical literature. And the Normans called themselves Francie or Frenchmen. The last of the Saxon kings of England was Harald and he was defeated at the Battle of Hastings in 1066 by William, Duke of Normandy. And so, William the Conqueror, the Norman Conqueror became the new ruler, the new king of England. After the Battle of Hastings, and the Norman establishment in England, French became the language of the upper class people. It was used in the courts, in schools and also for creating literature. The ordinary people of England continued to speak English. So, the French words were absorbed completely by English and it was this blending of Saxon and French that made English a rich and modern language. The important works, English works of the Anglo-Norman period. We have been talking about the Norman conquest of uh, Anglo-Saxon England and how French gained ascendancy among the aristocracy and the upper class in England. Despite that, the ordinary English people continued to speak in the English language and uh, English being a very versatile language absorbed all the French words and that is how it adapted itself to the change. So, now what I am going to talk about is the important English works of the Anglo-Norman period. Four works have been recognized as the most important works of the Anglo-Norman period. First is Geoffrey's Historia Regum Britannae, Leomond's Brute, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and the lovely poem The Pearl. These are the most important works of the Anglo-Norman period. So first I will be talking about Geoffrey's Historia Regum Britannae. It was also referred to as Geoffrey's History. Geoffrey was actually a Welsh monk and he had collected some of the Celtic legends which had been preserved for nearly 400 years 
by the ordinary people despite the successive invasions of England by various races of people from different parts of Europe. So he used his imagination and these ancient legends to write a complete history of the Britons. So it was the first complete history of the Britons. It was a blend of pagan and Christian literature and it actually gave a new energy to the literature of England of this time because it displayed the rich poetry and romance of author and his knights and other such stories. Geoffrey's history was actually an inspiration for greater works which came in later periods. It was an inspiration for Shakespeare's King Lear. It was an inspiration for Mallory's Mort the Author and Tennyson's Idylls of the King. It displayed the rich poetry and the romance of author and his legendary knights. The next important work of this period is Lemon's Brute. It is the most important verse of the Anglo-Norman literary period. It chronicles history. It is a verse chronicle that deals with history. It has rhyming lines. And Lemon was the first to write as an Englishman for Englishmen. Lemon collected material from three books. One by Bede, the other in Latin by St. Albin and a third one by Wace and he compiled the material of all three into a single book. This poem begins by describing the destruction of Troy and the arrival of Aeneas the Duke in Italy. Brutus, a descendant of Aeneas, sets out with his people to a new land in the west. That is the founding of the Britain Kingdom. And the last section of the poem describes the history of Arthur and his knights. The next important work of this period is Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. It is one of the most uh, interesting and uh, considered to be the best work in the Arthurian romances known as the Gawain cycle. The author of this work is unknown and uh, this person may also have been responsible for writing the beautiful poem, The Pearl. He is considered to be the greatest poet of Norman England. The poem is remarkable for its dramatic storyline, its uh, detailed description and its high moral quality. It is a blend of French and Saxon elements. It is written in an elaborate stanza that combines meter and alliteration. And at the end of each stanza, there is a rhymed refrain, a repetition, which is called by the French as the tail rhyme. Three beautiful poems were also written in this period, around uh, 1350 or so. And uh, these poems are The Pearl, Cleanness and Patience. The Pearl was translated in 1864 by Richard Morris. He also did some uh, editions, uh, editing work on this particular poem. Now, this is a very beautiful poem. It is an intensely human and realistic picture of a father's grief for his lost little daughter, Margaret. The other two poems, Patience is a paraphrase of the book of Jonah and uh, Cleanness moralizes on the basis of stories from the Bible. There were a number of miscellaneous works which were written during the Norman period, the Anglo-Norman period and uh, this last slide focuses on uh, those miscellaneous works of the Anglo-Norman period. The first one is Rule of the Anchoresses. It is Old English prose that tells of three ladies who did not wish to become nuns but were very deeply interested in religion. Then uh, there is the humdrum mundane ormulum written by Orm. It is about gospel lessons. And the last one is Cursor Mundi which came out in 1320. It is a long metrical romance which is based on the Bible and it depicts the tale of God and man from creation to doomsday. So with this, I conclude my 
presentation on Anglo-Norman literature. Thank you.